So, um, our first review of the day is going to be for the film The Front Room. Uh, the Front Room is a movie directed by the twin brothers Max and Sam Eggers there, and they are related to uh, other horror director Robert Eggers. Um, they're Robert Eggers, you know him. He's done such things as like The Lighthouse and The Witch and famous horror movies such as that. And I guess the other Edgar brothers try to, uh, I guess they're stepping into the family business here with the movie The Front Room. Now, this is an A24 film, psychological horror film, and what is going on in this film? Well, you got a couple. Nice, beautiful, young couple here. Um, you have Brandy, who plays Belinda, and you have uh, Andrew Burnap, who plays Norman. And, you know, they have a child on the way, but, you know, obviously what the, brings a child brings a lot of financial issues. Uh, Brandy's character, she just recently quit her job, so she's out of work, so they lose an income there. And they live in this kind of this old house that's kind of run down. So it's like, is this even a safe environment for the child? But you have um, the stepmother of the Norman character here who, you know, his he gets a call from her saying that his father died. He goes to the funeral and then she makes a deal with him. She says, like, hey, let me come live with you. And then when I die, you guys get all my money. And she's got a lot of money. Apparently, there's a scene where she writes down the amount of money she has and it's Apparently, it's a lot of zeros because their eyes bug out like crazy. Um, but when this woman moves in, you know, you have those issues with your in-laws there. But what if your in-law was not only just kind of crazy, but also racist and a little bit weird and also this uh, religious fanatic and, you know what I mean, <laughs> and also hated your guts there. Um, and that's kind of the terms of what's kind of going on in this film. Um, Dusk, I'm going to pass you to get your thoughts. What are your thoughts on the front room here? Uh, this, uh, this movie is based on the short story, The Front Room by Susan Hill. And when I say based on, I mean loosely, but it has a similar, uh, concept couple. They have a very overbearing, uh, relative mother-in-law and it comes to stay and starts to kind of absorb her way into the family. And that premise alone is kind of what intrigued me about this movie what also intrigued me about the movie is if you have watched any of the A24 trailers was just how kind of weird and off the wall this was. The movie kind of felt like it wasn't really taking itself too seriously. It's kind of playing with the, the genre. And as we've seen wildly different movie takes this year with Love Lies Bleeding, Civil War, Maxine, we've kind of gone up back and forth on the kind of realm and gambit that a24 has kind of released this year i was uh, looking forward to seeing a more uh almost like black comedy take in a more psychological horror with some those elements and while i say they are there i just didn't think they mix quite well in this one i felt the just some of the acting was just really hammy to the point where i was i was kind of su surprised and i just didn't it just didn't feel like it gelled all the way through to make this. It, it was more weird than it was scary, more um, kind of off the wall, like just tonal issues without being like terrifying or having a, a, a psychological presence to it. I will give credit where credit's due. I think the direction, at least in the uh, cinematography angle, there's some good cinematography moments some brief moments where they show clips or, or elements of kind of weird things happening. But besides that, I just, I just didn't really think the movie gelled. It kind of had a loose tone and ultimately I just wasn't very satisfied with it. Mm. Okay. Um, so with this movie, I think some solid performances in here, um, you know, coming from the main lead actors um, and mostly you'll just see this, the three of them. This is a pretty, small movie here yeah this is pretty much one of those like you could make a play about this yeah the bottleneck and, story um because really i mean they don't really go anywhere other than there's the funeral scene and then there's the house that's pretty much it they don't really go too many other places yeah pretty movie. much um and you you do this and you also have you know Catherine um hunter who's in this who people just saw recently she was in poor things uh that came out last year she was the madam at the brothel in that and here, I think if you're going to see this movie for 
any reason, it's mainly for her of what oh, she's yeah. kind of doing here and what she, she really has the most to play with here and the most to do. And, and I think that's where a lot of the energy of the script is really with her and the, like a lot of the, her actions there and the back and forth she has with Brandy. The husband is kind of just there sometimes. Yeah. I mean, he kind of, he, he's just kind of, uh, a thing that's there that really this movie is about Brandy and the mother-in-law really yeah. might as well have not even had him in the movie or he's off overseas. Yeah. I mean, cause he's like, I don't want to deal with this. I'm going to work. You know what I mean? So he, yeah. he's kind of off away doing that. Um, and if you see this trailer and you're expecting like, Oh man, something, I mean, I don't know if this is a big spoiler, but if you're expecting something big supernatural to happen in this, that's not going to happen. It, it, there's no real big supernatural thing in this movie. Um, it's just kind of, I mean, it's mainly playing with a lot of the thriller aspects here and just the fact that, you know, of Catherine Hunter's performance of, you know, what, you know, what is going to happen? What is she going to be doing? Um, when's the other shoe going to drop? And a lot of the horror comes of also just her being an elderly woman as it is. And kind of the movie kind of just goes like, well, aren't old people kind of gross? Uh, you know, just in t terms of them being around and they're always coughing, God, and, you know, fluids are always coming out of them. You know, she's like coughing up yellow fluid and it's like, Ugh. and then, you know, there's a scene where, you know, because in the movie she's incontinent. So she goes to the bathroom there and there's a scene where she does it in the bed. And even though you can't actually smell it or you're not actually there, the people reacting to it in the movie, like they're gagging. I mean, that made me gag. I mean, because it's just like, imagine that. Um, mm -hmm. And there's even like a montage of the movie where the baby's born and then you also have this elderly woman and, and Brandy has to take care of both. She has to clean double the, the, the double the shit. And that just was like, oh, I mean, that that really made you gag. And then there's also scenes where she's, you know, uh, kind of I mean, you don't see everything, but she's kind of naked in the bathtub. You see that that's kind of, I think, portrayed in a, a little bit of a horrific way. What, what did you think about a lot of what Catherine Hunter did? in the movie? I mean, I think she's the only reason you see this movie personally. Mm. Uh, yeah. Her performance is when I mentioned ham, she was what I was referring to. She's, she just goes for it with her tone, her accent, whether it lands or not, she goes for it. And I got to applaud her on that. She, she's going whole hog. And honestly, this movie is saved because of this, because otherwise I think, Brandy is fine. I think the actress is fine. She's kind of the straight man in the situation, and she really doesn't. It's really just kind of a back and forth between the two. But it really is the uh, the mother in law show, and that that's both its benefit and its its weak greatest weakness is that once you kind of are realize that this is just a two man performance, or I should say two women performance, it this, it's kind of not that scary. It's just kind of like, okay, where are you taking me? A24 has uh, a lot of positives. They some they can do a lot of great things with a small budget, and they often allow a lot of small-time directors to eventually get their really big break with a limited budget and a really interesting concept. And I can see moments where this movie could have really worked. I was almost reminded in some moments that like this could have been maybe a uh, the yellow wallpaper, a short story, uh, maybe short story. This could have been about madness and someone just kind of losing their, their crap over time. And we really delve into a character, but it never really goes that way. It just kind of just escalates and it doesn't feel natural. It, it never really got me into its world. It just felt like I was just watching just two people at each other's throats. And I kind of knew where this was going to go unless something wild really happened that I was kind of hoping for. And it didn't quite go that way. Yeah. You know, like I said, I mean, you're expecting kind of the other shoe to drop. And I don't think for me, it doesn't really do that. Um, you know, like it builds up this tension. It builds up kind of this, you know, battle between these two people. And then you're expecting like some, you know, big shoe to drop kind of at the end of it. I don't think it kind of pays off there for all this kind of, lead up to it and this movie's short it's only like an hour and 26 minutes i think thank god um it feels a lot longer it's one of those it movies that it feel it's like a shorter movie but it feels a lot longer than what it is which is you know kind of like not what you maybe want to hear a movie being this kind of with such a small runtime there but that's what it kind of feels like it's like eventually it just kind of runs out of stuff to do i think 
and um you know it tries to broach you know subjects of like racism um or you know this battle between the two of them there that doesn't really go anywhere not really no really add much to the movie um abuse you know uh there it tries to do that subject as well and i think again it just doesn't really go anywhere yeah. with that um just kind of surface level stuff these are all elements that are brought in fairly early into the movie and then around just kind of like the halfway mark they just kind of drop it and it's never really you know brought in it's the norman the uh the husband there's some you i kind of wanted more out of that that trio relationship and wanted to see more of his involvement and without that third piece it it feels empty because a lot of these elements of whether or not he's being uh, manipulated or how much of how good of a manipulator she is, she is his mother-in-law would have really benefited if he was around and there was a change. But when he just kind of shows up, it just, he almost felt like a chapter. Oh, I'm here now. Okay. Here's the end of that little scene or this chapter moment. Oh, mm -hmm. I'm back now again. Okay. That's the end of that chapter in this scene. Okay. We can, it's almost like etching. This is where the next step of the progressive amount of that shooter drop. And it just never happens. It's just, Oh, that scene happened. Oh, okay. He's believes her now. That doesn't make sense. Not really. Okay. So this happens. Okay. He finally stood up to her. Hmm. And you're like, Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, this good ingredients. Mm -hmm. I mean, here, I think it's, it's good ingredients to make a great movie. It's just that, I mean, the directors didn't really cook shit. <laughs> I mean, it's like they didn't really make a good, you know what I mean? It's good ingredients, yeah. but you you fucked up the meal, I think, to a degree. Um, I don't hate this movie. Um, I don't strongly dislike it. I just think it's it's okay. It's fine. Um, for me, I guess I give my rating now. Yeah. I give it a stream it. You know, I, I think that's mm -hmm. fine for this movie. Um, I think, it, like I said before, um, if you're the main reason to see it, not to discredit any of the other actors, but the main reason, I mean, the real star of the show, the MVP, is Catherine Hunter of what she's doing as the the mother Solange is, is there. I think she's obviously the real kind of star of the show, and she's one of the main reasons to see this. And you also mentioned the cinematography and things like that, the look of the movie, um, and just the battle between her and uh, Brandy's character is sort of fun to watch, but I just think it doesn't. It doesn't really, you know, escalate all that much. That's in a to me an exciting way um, of kind of where things go. Um, so for I just for me I just kind of give it a yeah, just kind of a plain stream it. For me. What about you? Yeah, I'm kind of right there with you. This is a stream it movie. It really that one great one really out there performance is really what's holding this movie together, and the rest of it. Uh, she's the load bearing. Uh, factor of this movie if she wasn't there this movie wouldn't even work what little works with it is because of her uh, brandy does as much as she can but without that extra ingredient without the utilizing of all the appropriate pieces it just never quite comes together and that's unfortunate because uh, like you said the ingredients are here you could have made something really really good but it just never quite lives up to what could have been a fun uh, premise and potential for some really good psychological horror or even thriller elements and uh yeah this is just a, this is just a stream it's, uh, yeah. check it out on um netflix later or shutter or wherever you, you see this later but i just don't think this is movie mm -hmm. yeah and it plays with you know a lot of these elements you see the the imagery here with you know you see in the trailer and it's like, okay, where is this really going to go? And it's like, they kind of they don't really do much with it. It's just they yeah, kind of creep you out. It's like, oh, yeah, it's creepy. Pretty much. Congratulations. Yeah. You saw the best parts. Yeah. Just, oh, it's creepy. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, hello there, Javon. Good. Uh, he says, hey, Brandy is in it. Uh, uh, has Brandy in it? Ain't expected much. And thanks for the cheers, man. Much appreciated. Yeah, thank you, Javon. Um, but hey, Brandy's good. I think she's solid in the movie. She's um, solid. It's just she doesn't. Did you notice in her performances, her eyes would like, widen unnecessarily at certain points when she talked like oh. she'd have like the way she talked and then her eyes would widen in in between certain lines i don't know if that's just to her performance thing or hmm. to that's a direction problem but i just noticed it and once i noticed that i couldn't stop uh, i don't know she was looking at some weird shit i don't know i mean it, it was but even during nor normal conversation mundane conversation she did that too or when she got upset like her eyes would like she would open her eyes wider as she talked i just thought that was an interesting thing and once i noticed it i never stopped mm. noticing it 
Oh, okay. Maybe when Christian comes Stewart, on... when you notice that she never closes her mouth, once you mm. notice that she never closes her mouth in the the earlier Twilight movies or anything else she did quite after it, it it's just a a thing you notice. Now, with Kristen Stewart, I do kind of notice that a little bit. Yeah, with her, I do kind of notice that. Uh, but maybe, hey, maybe when it comes to streaming, maybe I'll I gotta rewatch it there and see what you're talking about <laughs> with uh, the front room there. Um, oh, you meant poor choice in movies is what you mean? Okay, um, there. Uh, I mean, I I haven't seen Brandy in much recently. I mean, that's what also kind of intrigued me about this movie, The Front Room, is that uh, as Brandy, I haven't seen her in much in a while. I know she's gonna be Cinderella again in the upcoming uh, the sequel they're gonna do. Uh, mm -hmm. I know they're uh, they're gonna do that, but uh, so yeah. Uh, but I yeah yeah Brandy yeah Moesha back in the day I used to yeah big part of my childhood back in the day Brandy also her music as well so mm -hmm. uh, I had that uh, so yeah two just plain streamants for mm -hmm. front room 